Hey guys, today I'm doing a power jack replacement on an ASUS UX331A laptop. Now this laptop came in with your typical loose power jack. You could wiggle it in just the right way to make it work. And that would go back and forth from power, AC power and battery. And that connection inside is loose and needs to be replaced. So the first step is to take apart the laptop obviously and to remove all the bottom screws. This is a soldered in jack onto the motherboard, so this is going to require desoldering and resoldering a new piece on. And with this one, I started to pry it open, uh, but I quickly realized that you need to remove the two top screws underneath the rubber bottoms on the top there, or what looked like in the bottom in the video here. So I just take a small flathead screwdriver, just carefully pry up that little rubber pad, and remove each of the screws underneath those, and that will get the bottom completely off. And I'm using a, a thin guitar pick as my pry tool. And it just fits under there perfectly to remove that back cover. Now the first step you want to do is remove the battery or de detach the battery. Um, sometimes the battery has to be removed, sometimes it doesn't. Usually it does, more cases than not. But you want to make sure that battery is disconnected before you do anything else. Um, if there's sometimes a thing could be in standby or it could accidentally be on, you don't know. Um, just want to make sure you disconnect that battery. And this one kind of pries up, so I just took that flathead on both sides there and, and carefully worked it up until it removed. And so now I'm going to take a look at removing this battery here. This one actually does have to come out. There are some connectors that are underneath it and, and the speaker wire goes along it as well I believe. So that'll come up eventually here, but I'm taking off the SSD, removing that. There's some more cables underneath there. Now I'm disconnecting the speaker wire. And now that that speaker wire is off there, I was able to get the battery out. So now I'm just, just going to disconnect all the cables. You got the touchpad, the security, fingerprint reader there, the backlit keyboard cable. There I'm removing the touchpad and the keyboard. And these are flip up style connectors. They lock, they flip up and down. So they don't come off the little connectors. You want to be careful not to remove them all the way. And the video cable, you can just pull it straight up. It's got a little handle there to kind of pull on. And here I'm going to dis disconnect the two Wi-Fi leads. Let's take a little flathead and just go under in there and carefully pry up. And then here I'm going to disconnect the fan. Just gently taking that flathead on each side just to pry it out. 
And so now I'm going to disconnect or remove the hinge screws. You have to open up the hinge a little bit because the hinge overlaps onto the motherboard. So after I remove these two hinge screws on each side, I can, as you'll see in the video here, I kind of lift up a little bit on the computer to make those hinges open. And then I can set it back down. And now the hinges are up and I can pry them open a little bit more to gain access to the board. And so now I'm going to remove the motherboard screws that are holding that in. I'm just checking the board here to see if it's ready to come out. Sometimes those fans and heat sink need to be removed and sometimes they don't. Um, and, and in this case here, the fan's going to need to be going to need to be removed. It's holding it in place there. So now that those fan screws are removed, the motherboard can come all the way out, and you don't need to necessarily remove the heat sink. And here's a close-up of the jack that needs to be replaced. Uh, it doesn't have any real obvious physical damage, but um, sometimes that, that crack or that break can be internal, or sometimes it's just very loose and wobbly when you plug it in. And so now that we're onto the desoldering part, and I'm just going to remove this little Kapton tape that's over the over a couple of the solder points here. And I'm using a, a Hakko soldering iron set to 750 degrees, pretty typical. And before I do anything, I like to add solder flux onto these points. Um, the flux combined with adding some solder really helps break everything up and get everything moving in there. That solder is you know, really not meant to be removed easily. And I found that adding solder and adding flux before I even try to do the desoldering part just really helps everything and makes it a lot easier on you. If you try to go at it without doing this, it's almost impossible to get that solder out. So I really recommend adding some flux and some solder to get that stuff flowing. It'll make the desoldering process much easier. And so now I take my desoldering braid and just place it over each one of those through holes. And I'm using a chisel tip, kind of like a flathead style soldering tip that really kind of nicely fits into that through hole to get that heat inside there to get that solder to come up. And so you just go over each hole, just trying to remove as much solder as possible. Um, sometimes this is easier said than done. It's kind of an experience thing and uh, you have to get out as much as you can to get that jack loosened up. And you can also use a pump. Uh, people ask me all the time, why do I not use the pump? I, I have one. I use that too at times. I've just found the braid to be pretty easy to work with and usually does a good job for me. And if the braid doesn't work, I have a couple different techniques. One being the pump and the other one later on in the video is going to be my surface mount air solder to help remove that port if I can't get it out just by simply using the braid. A lot of the time you'll run into, if you use the braid, that you just can't get everything out. Or same thing with the pump. You'll go over it and you'll go over it and it just won't come out. And eventually I end up using the surface mount air soldering just to heat those holes up. And you'll see that shortly in the other part of the video here. And if you don't have an air soldering tool, another thing you can do is just do this process over again. Um, you can add solder, add flux. If you got a hole that you just can't get that solder out of and you're putting the braid over it and it's still not coming up, you know, just, just go back over it again with more flux and more solder to try to heat that thing up and get it flowing. Sorry for blocking the view on some of these things. It's kind of hard to, to get the angle I need to get while still soldering and still getting the video. But the idea is the same. Just want to use that flux, use that solder. Angle that tip in different angles so you can heat up that through hole.
So now we're going to move on to the air soldering. Um, I could have gone over that again, it's just I have this air soldering tool available, so it just makes it a lot easier. And what I'm doing now is I'm taking the hot air and I'm, I'm making sure, as you can see on the left part there, I put some Kapton heat, heat tape over that port. I, I just don't want, to, uh, don't want to damage anything. If there's any kind of delicate circuitry around the port, which there is a lot of the time, or, um, or, or an actual HDMI port or USB, whatever, I like to cover everything up uh, just in case because it is using some hot air. You don't want to melt that port or melt those connections or something like that. But I'm holding it about an inch, half inch over the jack, roughly. And this one came out really easy because I desoldered most of that with the braid. And then once you get a lot of that solder out of there with the braid, the hot air really works its magic very well and gets that jack removed. So I can just take the tweezers and remove it. And now that the jack is removed, I'm going to go back over these through holes. There's still some solder left inside there that needs to be removed. Obviously the jack isn't going to go in if you have existing solder left. But once you get that jack removed and you're just dealing with a through hole, it's quite a bit easier with that braid to just go over it again. So I'm going to add some flux and go over it again with the iron and the braid. And the same thing applies here. If you, if you have a, hole, a through hole that you can't get that solder out of, just re-add some solder to it, add some flux to it, and go back over it again. Sometimes it doesn't work on the first pass and you're going to need to do it again. And this is a this Asus UX331A board is extremely thin, so you don't want to hold that that iron on there for too long. It's one of the thinnest motherboards I've ever seen. Um, and if you put too much, like right here where I'm soldering on this little leg, if you put too much stress on it, you can end up breaking that. So you need to be really careful when you're holding that iron over that part. Make sure you have something underneath these motherboards. I, I use a stack of scratch paper. Sometimes I've used like a plastic lid. And I'm just putting that underneath there to make that flush with the board. So then if I do have if I did if I do put some stress on there, then you're helping alleviate that stress by having it flush. So I'd recommend some kind of hard surface that can get hot underneath your motherboard when you're soldering it. Especially in the case when the jack is out, because then you're adding even more stress to those holes. And what I did here too is I flipped it over. Sometimes going through it on one side, you know, isn't gonna work, so you can flip the board over and repeat the process of adding solder and flux if needed. So here's kind of a pesky hole that I just can't seem to get the solder out with the braid, so I'm just going to add a little bit more solder to it, try to reflow that hole, and then desolder it again. Just the act of adding that solder in there will just get that everything potentially in that hole flowing and moving and get it out with the braid. And it doesn't always work on the first pass, so can't get it, don't get frustrated, just add some more solder, add some more flux. You can be really liberal with adding that solder and flux on these things. So here I'm just taking some 99% alcohol, just after you get the desoldering done, you know, I like to clean up the board, get all that flux and solder and everything off of there, makes for a nice clean install of the new jack. So now I'm going to put in the new piece, make sure you put it in on the right side, try to take a mental note of which way it came in. 
Uh, the last thing you want to do is find out when you try to put the motherboard back in that you've installed the jack on the wrong side and it doesn't fit and you have to do all this over again it might ruin the part that you have and this one was really tricky um, what I've noticed over the years is when you buy the jack for let's say this model the UX331A sometimes you get a piece that doesn't fit exactly the way it is in the case of this one the front pen front two pens were off by just like a millimeter or two and that's enough to where the jack won't fit in there properly so what I ended up doing is modifying the jack a little bit to make it fit here the thing just won't just doesn't want to go in there so I had to pause the video and I just modified it a little bit to make it fit and it was really hard to show on video so I, I didn't show that part but the jack did end up fitting in there just fine eventually I just kinda had to work it in a little bit and bend one of the pens slightly to get in and after the new jack is installed just make sure you add some flux over each one of those through holes and now I'm gonna add solder to each one of the through holes adding that flux on top will just help you ensure you get a really good flow no cold solder joints uh, you want that to flow all the way through the hole so you can kind of see it a little bit on the other side. And here I'm just going to go over each one of the little holes again, just making sure that solder is flowed all the way through. And that's it, really. That's what you want to do to get this thing taken apart, desoldered, and a new jack soldered on. The next step is to put this thing back together and fire it up. Everything went great in this case. It's getting power now. It's charging the battery. No more switching back and forth from AC to power. And this is a repair that I do for $69 parts and labor. And you can visit our website, pcrepairhelp.net. If you have any questions, just let me know. And here's the finished product. Thanks for watching.